Hello, Lucy. Hello. <laughs> oh, welcome uh, to the Heimer. I'm John. I'm Jacob. Here we are. Yeah. Oh, we've had some good episodes lately. We did. We had a t two good, solid episodes. Yeah. These past two weeks. I mean, they're all great. They are. But. <laughs> I uh, had a little incense going. Yeah, I was. Do you want a little incense? Or? Well, it's up to you. Maybe at some point. No, yeah, 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 yeah. So music, music. That's our topic for yeah, today. Yeah. Music and the essence of music. We could just turn on music and play it. Just that's true. And sit in silence and listen to music. Nah. No, no, no. That, that's not really a podcast. No, that's more like um, radio DJing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, we need a little more information on this because I don't yeah. feel very. I don't. Hey, think, oh. it's Evan. Hey, Evan. Evan, everybody. All Hi. right. How are you all doing? Great. 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 Uh, just fantastic. I got the sense that you all were talking about music, so I figured I would come and share my thoughts on it if, if that's okay is that that's, yeah 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 so what's the best genre of music scientifically that is a great question scientifically. <laughs> scientists have been struggling with that uh, some of them say it's quiet music some say it's loud music well mm. it probably depends on what you're doing right mm -mm. No. No. no so if you're like getting ready for uh some sort of like a uh, football game you're listening to Beethoven. Yeah, that is the idea. That's what scientists Mozart. would Mozart. Yeah. Because it's an equalizing thing, maybe. Yeah, right. you, have to, you want to keep the bass and the treble at the right spot. So if it's Beethoven, you want a lot of bass. Mm -hmm. A lot of bass. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. But scientifically... Um, heavy, me heavy metal, should, right? Yeah, it should need to be heavy metal. Heavy metal. See, I told you, John. Well... Uh, <laughs> 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 do you, you listen to heavy metal i do yeah okay yeah not what are, only what are some of the bands that you listen to uh megadeth and a little bit of metallica and um a little bit of slayer when suicidal you, tendencies whoa that's a band name yeah whoa. when do you find yourself listening to this music um like what, what are you doing when you're listening to this? almost anything but i it's calming for me even though it's fast paced usually it's fast paced it's calming the theory i've heard is that it's something mathematical because it orders your brain so it doesn't matter the speed that the music's coming because i like bluegrass too but i tip i like fast bluegrass i like finger picking fast banjo mandolin playing kind of bluegrass mm -hmm. so i've heard the theory that it's something to do with mathematics but i don't know and like and psychology like math and like the human brain and the, the are you just talking about like a pattern like a certain yeah pattern maybe of it and, and maybe the repeating pattern yeah mm -hmm. maybe the rhythm maybe rhythm i don't know though have you ever heard like a singing bowl yeah you know to when I have heard the singing bowl, I feel distinctly that it's like relaxing. Mm -hmm. You know, they Can make you that just sense. oh the bowl. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, I've only been like if I go to a yoga class, mm -hmm. you know, they do. It's yeah. a, like a rock that they drag across the bowl. Yeah, some kind of. That's not very poetic, John. <laughs> <laughs> probably, it's a wand. It's a wand. Like, oh. They're casting a spell on, yeah. on you. Yeah, and I feel it. And I, so, so that there must be some kind of scientific explanation for that too, I get, or is it? I don't know. Yeah. Why do I feel anything when I hear a singing bowl? Right. What, what are you feeling? Like, is it calming? Is it? Yeah, I think so. I think it's like focusing or something. Like, uh, I feel like pre like being present in the moment. Um, like I'm not worrying or, you know, I do. I mean, I thought. I feel like part of the sense is that. Okay, I'm not thinking about the next step. I'm just here mm -hmm. now. You know? That's what I. That's what I think I'm wanting from it. Anyway. Okay, so it almost like uh, it clears your mind of any future uh, thinking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what kind of music do you listen to? Uh, a lot of the time, singer-songwriter stuff. 
Uh, I am into more of the more lyrical things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Get distracted. laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's my fault. <laughs> yeah, so um, like last night I was listening to O.C. Elliot, which is um, a male and female combo, and they play off each other pretty well. And the, is lyrical meaning that the lyrics are a part of the, part yes, of the draw for you? Yes, very much part of the draw. Yeah, yeah. Um, something more deep with the lyric, more poetic. Uh -huh. Like an emotional or like in, like s stories about life or something? Or? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> Seemed like a good idea. I think yeah, it smells really nice. So far. Yeah. So far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do are lyrics in metal part of the draw for you? Not really, very little. Though I do like the political side of them. Mm -hmm. I like a lot of environmental and political themes, but no, it's mostly the. What music. do you mean by that? Of heavy metal, a political theme within. So, what sorts of themes are you, are you feeling or are you seeing in these mu in this uh, type of music? Well, I know, like in the, um, well, like. Uh, uh, well, there's like, um, there are vegan straight edge bands. <laughs> Look at the camera on that one. <laughs> like Earth Crisis, which is pretty much all about environmental themes. And they've been going since the mid 80s, sort of. St they're still together. And, um, you know, I mean, the environmental movements predates all, you know, the 80s, of course. But um, I feel like a lot of punk, punk is like that too. Punk is tends to be political or about the environment or um so it seems like right like certain genres have to do with not always but certain types of okay one one thought i had when we decided we were going to talk about music is where what's the start of music what where where did music begin and become well, how did it become a distinct thing from sounds and noises that people were making mm -hmm. oh this has to be some sort of um i imagine uh a tribe right back to the, uh, some sort of tribal days and they found a log that was hollow and somebody like, <laughs> hit it right you know they had like they hit it and they felt something right there's an echo within mm -hmm. they, they heard the sound waves bouncing off the inside and so they hit it again they liked it and somewhere along the lines the rhythm came into that mm -hmm. So that means that so the so the first the log sound happened and then a, a human was there to hear it and the human said, "Ooh, that sounds good." That sounds good. Yeah. How yeah. do I know it sounds good? Yeah. Right. Mhm. Mm maybe also like chanting and stuff. Like maybe there would have been a reason to use yeah. your voice oh, to like. Vocal thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it started with like, you know, like grunt three times if there's you know something nearby I need to know about and it's like, uh, uh, you know like and yeah. something that sort of turned into chanting and then song. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it could have been yeah a warning, but maybe like a um, a, a chain, right? So the first person and the last person in this chain probably couldn't hear each other, but um, as they grunt down almost like a chain of people each person grunts oh, right after the, I see what you mean. the previous mm -hmm. person to send us to send a, a message to across, the, across the plains mm -hmm. say. yeah mm -hmm. yeah and then that could almost have like a, a choir-ness mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. so it might have started as a as a communication method and like uh for like like immediately practical like we are at war or we're hunting or mm -hmm. something like that yeah what's the oldest genre of music that's around now like that what's the oldest one which one do we have now that like i'm talking in broad terms like if you go to a music shop and they have the different racks or whatever like which one of those has been around longest mm. like classical music yeah i guess just classical uh -huh. that would be what 1500s i don't mm -hmm. know maybe yeah. Got your harpsichord, your uh, your uh, piano forte. Cool. Uh, a lute. Ooh, the lute. And a lyre. Mm. 
Excuse me, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> did I pronounce it wrong? <laughs> I'm not great with my Gaelic dialects. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can work on that. Yeah. <laughs> so classical could be it. I can believe that. Uh, the traditional American musics, I'm sure they're not the oldest, obviously, but that would be from after, obviously, colonization of North America. So, but they probably began in Europe too, and something like, like, like you said, Gaelic or like a like Western European style. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe African drumming yeah. and chanting, singing, and that kind of thing. Totally. Yeah too but again i don't know if that's really a section at the local record store <laughs> yeah it depends on probably not here in, in town but yeah in some of the cities they probably have like more expansive collections and that kind of stuff in it mm -hmm. do you guys like um changing the subject a tad do you guys like fusion kind of stuff with music do you or do you find yourselves to be a little bit more like purist do you like you know, you like sort of like stay in your lane. Like if you like this kind of music, you think it sh you like it being that type of music and not mixing all the time. When you say fusion, you're just like across uh, genres. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Yeah, I think it, for me, it depends on what mood I'm in. Mm -hmm. Um, like singer songwriter is usually what I go to because usually when I'm listening to music, I'm working and I need something more calm, mm -hmm. um, something more creative going like like the deep lyrics i like to listen to those there's something there's meaning behind that and it almost gives meaning to my work as well mm -hmm. i start thinking more deeply about my work mm -hmm. do you, the the meanings of the lyrics so is it like you're tapping into an emotional like connection that oh you're definitely having, yeah it's like oh now i can like relate to my work more like with more of yourself or something yeah i I'm, yeah so there's definitely there's being able to um see how deep somebody can go with a lyric maybe um kind of inspires me to go deeper with my own work mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um the meaning behind it and um well i'm a designer so I, I think there's a lot of little things you can design for and so ma making sure you just kind of think about all that stuff mm -hmm. and the meaning behind it all what about your music evan because you you've written songs mm -hmm. and make music how are you influenced or what it, what inspires you with your music mm -hmm. uh probably i think most often i have been motivated to write music or make music when i feel sad or bad sad or mad or bad mm -hmm. um and it, which i've noticed is a thing like sometimes i'll hear songs that sound joyful like um like some of the like Motown music from the maybe 70s or, or late 60s or so I don't know exactly when but like they're just like celebrations of, like somebody's in love and they're just like rocking out and there's like saxophones and horns blaring and they're like I'm in love and this is wonderful and like I rarely ever write like that I, it's usually when I'm just like oh like uh you know br a breakup or mm -hmm. um or a, you know a death and then I'm like you know it's when I have to like I just feel stuck and then like, all right, I'm going to try to sing this out. And so it helps me like move through that experience. Um, so that's when I, that's when I do it, but I'd like, but I like it thinking about sex like, singer songwriter and the, like the, the deeper emotional side of it. I do, I really appreciate uh, the power of songs to bring me into that, like in that deeper emotional uh, yeah, experience or like, it put me in touch with my emotions. More yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. I'm assuming this is like a therapeutic thing as well for you then to write well, when you're in these kind of heightened emotions. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've been trying I've been trying to like be more be more present with my emotions lately especially like uh like speaking of like therapeutic like I've been going I've been doing therapy mm -hmm. and um the more that I do it, I'm finding like, oh, okay, the work here is just for me to like notice what I'm feeling, even just like be, just like, all right, I am, I'm sad right now. Okay, I'm just gonna like give that. I'm just gonna like say that, or like articulate it to myself, just like acknowledge, yes, I am sad. Mm -hmm. You know, and, mm -hmm. and like instead of just moving on to the next thing, just like, all right, this is what I'm feeling. Yeah. Do you find that you um, listen to certain types of music when you're in these emotions as well? Mm. Yeah, probably. 
Sometimes I forget about music, though. Do you ever forget hmm. about music? Hmm. Probably a little bit. Little bit chunks of time. I yeah, think I could. Like, if I question. was, I guess, overly emotional, I probably wouldn't turn to music. Really? Yeah. Just because of everything else going on in my head, I probably would forget about it. Mm -hmm. I use music to kind of sort of move myself, like, physically. Like, when I'm, like, cleaning or doing active, I love music. Like, almost always I have music going in those cases. Mm -hmm. So I think I... And that's every day sometimes, so I... I think I I can't imagine a day without music. Yeah, yeah. But okay, that's so you, so you don't really forget about it. May, maybe for an hour or two or something, but not yeah, not a whole day. I don't think. All right, this is a goofy question. Is music a drug? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't. Think I it, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say I don't think of it. I don't think it's a drug, but I think it could be addictive. I mean, some things are good things to be addicted to, and I would think music would be that. I don't really see any downsides to music. I don't know. I think dr uh, music is a drug. Mm. I do, th um, just because I, I think there is some sort of chemical being released in my brain when I hear certain songs. Um, I was listening to music the other day, and... Um, realized I started feeling depressed because of it. I was like, oh, I gotta stop listening to this. Um, like I wasn't, I was in actually in like a cleaning mood. It was, I was getting stuff done and then I started like kind of not wanting to get stuff done. <laughs> so I had to change that album. <laughs> yeah, if you find yourself staring out the window yeah, at like, the Whoa. crow outside, and, you know. <laughs> Well, what do you think, Evan? About the drug? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I do find my I'm susceptible to moods, mood changes from music, which is part of what I look for when I'm listening to it. Like I, you know, I, like if I'm in the mood to get stuff done, like if I'm moving, then yeah, I'm looking for music that has more rhythm, more energy, like maybe it's a little bit louder and a little less introspective, even you know, like mm -hmm. I just want to like I want to keep yeah, I want I want a rhythm. Um, and if something comes on that is more melancholy or it's like, yeah, it's slow and it's got some of those minor chords in it, then I'm like, oh, and I like <laughs> start thinking about the sadnesses of my life and yeah, it slows me down, you know. Yeah. It's powerful. Yeah, I suppose like radio stations traditionally and certain people with the control or a DJ in a club or whatever, there's a lot of power in that, right? Like you can really change the mood of like if you had a radio yes. station i know it doesn't work like this but if you had a radio station that was the only radio station in your small town and basically everybody's listening to it on the way to work between say 7 and 8 a.m and i mean that's quite a bit of power you're setting the stage for, for possibly those people's attitudes to start the, the whole mood of the town could be controlled by which songs you're picking yeah that's a, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. People just respond. Yeah, the brain chemicals. It's just mm -hmm. like there's a some kind of link that is created. Now, I'm not clear, like, to what extent, you know, nature versus nurture, right? Uh, mm -hmm. When I was in college, I took a class in ethnomusicology. So there's people who are, like, breaking down music in this really, you know, academic way and um, looking at how things sound in different cultures so like one example is like in um in middle eastern musics there are scales that are not present in western music so you know and you can probably imagine like i don't know i'm gonna do some i'm gonna try to do like yeah. I, I, that's not that's not real but i'm just saying like something like that to my to my ear i'm like what is this you know i, mm -hmm. I like my brain is not making sense of it i know that it's music but it makes me kind of uncomfortable and i don't know what to make of it you know Mm -hmm. And but the, of course the resonance that it has for people who listen to it normally is very different. They're like, you know, it means it could mean I don't any number of things. I don't know what it means or like what it feels like. Yeah. So is it a um, so is it a learned thing? Is that what you're getting to? Yeah. Right. Like is this something in like within your society you start learning certain things about music or even just um, growing up and hearing this music during certain moods. 
And yeah. so is it like triggering these things for you? I wonder about that. Well, you could study, you could, I mean, in theory, maybe study, do a twin study or possibly a study with um, a child with no hearing to, to try to check that out and see. I mean, I don't know. Like, do, yeah. do, if somebody can't hear, do, do they experience music? Beethoven, right? Well, r right. I mean, later on, he was he well, he was feeling vibrations, right? Do I remember that right? Because so, yeah. I remember hearing the story about him putting his head on the piano, and wow. and then you know playing each note to hear the different vibration, but not hearing the sound through his ears. Did he compose music like that? I think so. Sure. Whoa. I think yeah. he went deaf when he was like four or five, though. Yeah, he had a couple years there where he he heard things or some amount yeah. of things oh my goodness okay well i didn't know that that's crazy yeah, yeah. i could be wrong on all that but uh -huh. <clears throat> but you have is you that know? why you always played so loudly <laughs> 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 yeah do you think his mother is like hold it down in there yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. i gotta feel this mom <laughs> yeah oh, uh, poor little beethoven <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, he did okay. <laughs> yeah, he mm -hmm. did all right. But you've got to be able to hear music to experience it. Well, you, but you can feel like drumming. I think, well, yeah. I think a drum circle, if anything, that's more about feeling it, right? Yeah. Or when you go to a concert and there's a really huge sound system and it's like the bass is super intense. Mm -hmm. it's like, you, you can hear it in your chest yeah. or feel it in your chest. Yeah. yeah. That is kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. It'd be a neat thing to try to th think about getting music to people who have no hearing that are born like that. Like how could, how's a way, you know, what's a way other than vibration? I mean, actually getting that. I've heard they're getting closer to sort of cracking that whole thing and allowing hearing to people who are born without it. Like, I think that might be in our lifetimes that that is. Oh, yeah. You've heard that too? Yeah. Yeah. I think they're actually have experimented and it works. Wow. Yeah. How, yeah. How does it work? There's a definite, there's like some sort of implant in your ear um, that can vibrate whatever it needs to vibrate mm -hmm. in the right way. You mean and then it's wired to the to the brain? Whatever, or? yeah. I don't. It, I, it probably depends on how severe it is as well. Yeah. But what I I think I've heard is that, um, like you don't have an eardrum maybe, but there's still something in your ear that senses vibration. It just can't sense the vibration without that eardrum. Hmm. Interesting. And so this is almost like an artificial eardrum, and so it'll. I'm, I'm assuming there's some sort of mic on it and then it sends it to a speaker and that speaker then vibrates this uh, sensor in your ear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Huh. Are there certain kinds of music you guys really don't like? Like, I know sometimes we feel uncomfortable saying that because it could hurt someone's feelings or, you know. Cause... Jazz. Ooh. All types or? Yeah, I yeah. can't. Maybe I need to study it more, but I, um, it's hard for me to listen to that because of how chaotic it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about contemporary jazz more than like old Billie Holiday 1920s kind of jazz, probably. Hmm. You're not talking about like, you know, lounge singing jazz. No, I'm talking about that too. Oh, know. that too. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, that well, maybe. Yeah. I'm getting really angry. Like, yeah. yeah. Let's <laughs> change topics now. <laughs> Maybe our producers of the show could put some jazz in to start this oh, episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about you, Evan? I, I, do, so I, am, I am embarrassed. I'm glad you, you said, offered that as a way of making space for it. Because I feel... I, uh, I, I don't get into, like... Um, uh, you know, in the Louisiana, like, Zydeco. Uh, so it's like a fusion, incidentally, of, like... Um, I think there's jazz influence and also like maybe some French influence, uh, it, but it's um, but it's like a music. So I'm the reason I'm embarrassed to talk about it is because it's a music that is associated with like a a, a black culture, like a, in in the U S. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. actually, there's like a lot. There's like a number of musics that I would say like I think of. 
other cultures or like people of color that they that those musics pertain to that I'm like that I don't relate to mm-hmm. and so that's what's embarrassing for me is to, to notice to like think that you know this mm-hmm. is like a it's a racial thing and then I feel like embarrassed about uh, like I don't want to have that sort of separation or I want to be able to relate to people of different like backgrounds you know I don't want to mm-hmm. just be like stuck in whiteness and be like oh, I only want you know but but that's but that is what but I I know that like even just hearing like Celtic music or something you know I'm like I get into that you know, I'm not from Ireland you know, yeah. none of my family that I know is from Ireland but there's something about the what's whatever is happening in, in that music that I relate to um, and I I don't think it's just because I know that it's white people doing it, but I also don't know what to make of this. That's interesting, yeah. I mean, uh, does this go back to the culture thing and how you grew up? And do you have any emotions tied to like that kind of music and so that music's just not bringing up anything for you? You don't feel it as much? Uh-huh. I, I, yeah, well, yeah, growing up, I, well, I, my, my family put on music on the stereo all the time, but not a lot of, like, um, you know, not black musics not uh mm-hmm. not like middle eastern musics definitely you know there's a lot of uh rock and like singer songwriter stuff that mm-hmm. was that was what my parents both were listening to a lot or classic rock mostly um, yeah yeah could there be any sort of way that that sort of thing could travel amongst our dna Mm. in any sort of way i i haven't even thought that through passed down through genes yeah some sort of uh you know sequencing of either rhythms or beats or something that resonates more because of thousands of years of background that we don't even necessarily know about i don't know that's kind of i'm just that's kind of a wild thought i don't know well maybe a topic for another time is uh epigenetic tags i know we talked about this yeah before yeah but with music i don't know yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. maybe i'm the same way evan i don't think you should feel bad about that we can't all types of music aren't going to work for all of us and you know so so let's end it on what you don't like jacob what what type of genre you do you not like i am not into country I said it there. I said it. I know it's hugely popular and I don't, it just doesn't, it's not that I hate it. It's not like I have to run away or anything, mm-hmm. but I find it very simplistic. It's partly because I'm not a lyric based person. Like the lyrics don't mean very much to me in any song of any type. It's, it's I'm like 90% about the music and 10% about the lyrics. So country music tends to be, you know, kind of just flat and and typical and standard and not deviate i like progressive rock and things that are willing to take chances and experimental stuff a lot more than i like you know something like country no i'm I'm there with i think modern kind of the more modern country songs i'm not for though i think country has influenced a lot of the genres that i do listen to Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm uh-huh yeah yeah so jazz and country yeah yeah yep yeah well i need to run yeah all right so this has been great thank you okay and um uh yeah all right thanks for thanks for coming on that was awesome it was great it was great yeah Yeah, a lot to think about see you later all right see ya that was a good episode yeah i feel like listening to music now i know we probably should go listen to some music yeah okay well Thanks, everybody, for listening. Um, and as always, thanks for uh, to our executive producer, Schmidt, for getting everything together. And our whole team of support staff who do things like mow yes. the grass and... Take uh, out the trash. Take out the trash. Just, and the, like, you know, like around the house doing stuff. Pet um, the cats, stuff like that. Pick up the toothpicks that fell on the floor. Stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for everybody for all your support. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Peace.